As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only Skookle Magookle. What's up, dude? <laughs> That's kind of upsetting, actually. <laughs> I didn't like that one at all. I, it it kind of, to the untrained ear, it sounds like I'm just, you know, kind of grounded to the Philadelphia area. Yeah. There's some meaning behind that. There that was I don't some care meaning. for. <laughs> This is because I said last week that you're going to run out of things, didn't I? It was. Uh, been, I, that one's what I thought of, and I was like, am I going to break it out? Do I want to rehash old wounds? I need to do it now. Like, it's, it's been a long weekend. We're both tired. Exactly, because it's the Christmas a little hor- spirit. Hornery. Hornery. Look, it's I not figured- the Christmas spirit. It is. You're in a good mood still, so I figured if I'm going to break out of a Schuylkill joke, now's the time to do it. Fair. We're never going to tell you what that joke <laughs> yeah. is, but uh, we know. And that's well, all that know. matters. Yeah. And some people listening know. Yeah, a couple of you know. Very few. There's only like a, six people in the world that'll get that reference, but those six will have a good hearty laugh. Yeah, good hearty laugh. Which is what you want to do when you're podcasting to a lot of people is keep it to only like six people understanding the joke. I feel like that is the formula for success. Yeah, that really is, honestly. It's just do more and more inside jokes on these things. I think that's the way to go. Anyway, yeah. um, episode number two of the day, and we're just having a good time out here. Yeah, we're uh, we're vibing. We are vibing. We're getting into a little so ho. Yeah, we did so co last episode. That Southern charm. Okay, so ho is a personal favorite of both of us. Actually, we got into this show big last year. If you don't watch it. You're probably not listening to this episode because this is a solo episode for Southern Hospitality. But if you listen to us no matter what and you are listening and you do not watch Southern Hospitality, do yourself a favor. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, we're, we're definitely not going to steer you in the wrong direction. Nope. If you're already listening to this and you don't watch the show and you're listening just because you like listening to us, you should trust us too. That's a really good You point. know? Yeah. You're going you're gonna to spend the extra time just to listen to our beautiful voices. You should trust us too. You should trust us. Hey. But not all the time. Hey, just trust us. Yeah, not all the time. No, no, no you can trust us. Sometimes me. we'll lead you astray. I will never. Why? Are you, what are you doing? Just what not a weird, with this. What a weird way <laughs> to garner trust. Well, I, you know. Don't trust me all you know the time. No, me. I might gaslight somebody into doing something and just say, yeah, I, I was just. You kidding. will gaslight somebody at some point. That is a given. Just, yeah. It's but fun. Again, this isn't. What do you. No, we're not getting. Why don't you go ahead and watch Southern Hospitality. There's three episodes, second season right now. Go back, watch the first season. What was it, like 10 episodes maybe? Maybe. Really got us through, and we enjoy the hell out of it. We sure do. But before we get into Southern Hospitality, first we have to plug something because we have our very first standalone solo live show in New York City, January 25th, the Green Room 42. It's in Times Square. It is a Thursday night. What else do you have to do on a Thursday night? And it's Thirsty Thursday, baby. We know you're going out in New York. We know you New Yorkers love to go out. So why don't you come out and hang out with us? Have a couple of drinks, a couple of laughs with some friends. It's a beautiful venue. It's in Times Square, the center of the world. We are going to be the center of the world. January 25th, Green Room 42. Why don't you come be the center of the world with us? What the fuck what happened a sale. there? You like that? Or is it too far? I don't know what happened. Is it too far? I, I'm i feeling a lot of things right now. I don't think it was too far, no. You excited? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, cool. Run through a brick wall. Hell yeah. Buy your tickets and run through that brick wall into the green room 42. Yeah. That was a plug. That, now that's a plug. Now that's how you plug something. That's a clean plug. Yeah, that's a clean plug. Last yeah. episode, I didn't have one. A dirty plug. Yeah. Eh, don't say that. We got the implication. Did we? Sometimes you need to let it go. Just let, let oh, the, I, I have let, to let it go. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Center of the world over there. I, I'm the one who has to let it go. We are the world. We are the How children. Did you go to another leap. Stop. You're, we you are the leaving. ones. You just call make a brighter day. Ones. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're, we'll be saving our own lives. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> you don't know this song? No. We are the world. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, that's what you we were doing. We are the children. Maybe you just started doing that. Everything before that was not. No, then I was doing okay, it. All right. We are the ones that make a brighter day, so let's start living. Yeah. Yeah. Giving. 
I don't know. Living. It's been a while. It's living. They made us watch that in like fourth grade, the actual music video of that. A lot of stars. Star studded. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it is a <laughs> midweek episode. And we did a ranking last episode of our favorite Christmas foods. You said you had another one on deck. I do. I'm going to go with uh, rankings of holidays. Oh, that's an easy one. Real holidays, though. I'm not talking about like President's Day. Arbor Day? Day Yeah, yeah, I knew. I I fucking knew you were Christmas number one. Okay. Thanksgiving two. July 4th, three. Easter four. And five would be... You do either Memorial Day or Labor Day. Or Halloween. Ooh. I think Memorial Day. Yeah, start of the summer. Yeah. Yeah, I hate Labor Day personally because one, it's the end of the, end summer, of the summer. Two, it's too crowded at the shore. You know why I hate anyway. Labor Day? Why? Because it was always the day before my birthday, which meant my birthday was the first day of school. September 5th. Oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, the first day of school was on my birthday... Six times. Did you even get like a cake or cupcakes or anything? At school? Yeah, my mom's the best. Did, so when you I still get got home, that? Okay. Of course I did. No, no, I meant at school. Like, at you know how school? they do no, that? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I was never that Because they didn't care because it was the first day of school. Uh-uh. Like, too much shit going on. Yeah, no, no. Can't, can't celebrate Steele's birthday. Yeah, Steel? Who cares? <laughs> Who's even a real name? I don't even know who this kid <laughs> is yet. He just got in my class. Yeah, okay, Steele. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. Uh, That's true. Uh, mine's mine's a little different. I go heavy on the, uh, the summer holidays. I go July 4th 1st. Really? Memorial Day 2nd. And then I go Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween. Okay. Yeah. I get down with that list. Yeah. It's a good list. Halloween's too. okay. Halloween can move up whenever it wants to, but Christmas is never super high just because like Thanksgiving starts off the holiday season and the food's great and you always have off the next day and then it goes right into the weekend. Christmas could be in the middle of the fucking week. And I could be working leading up to it and then have to go back to work the next day like I did today. And that really stinks. Yeah, that's tough. Anyone that says New Year's Eve, you're lying. Yeah, you're full of shit. Anyone that says doing New Year's I, is top five, you're If you lying. enjoy doing... A, like, a house party on New Year's Eve is fine. If you go to the bars on New Year's Eve, you're not a friend of mine. No. Like, New not. Year's Eve is a fun holiday when you're in your late teens and early 20s. That's yeah. it. Those of us who are real... We like to sit at home, eat food, maybe watch some movies, and probably fall asleep before midnight. And turn your clocks forward so your children think it's midnight at 8 p.m. That's if you have children. There you go. I do it to myself to make myself think that it's later than it is. That's why shooters' clocks are all two hours fast. Yes. I just gets... do it every year, and then I forget. Yep. But anyway, that takes us to our episode. And like I said, we are covering Southern Hospitality's most recent episode, but we will also take this opportunity to just chit chat about what they've been up to the first couple of episodes. For those of you that are newer to the show, we'll give you a little rundown on who we're watching and who our favorites are. But you, did you binge watch to get back up to speed here? I watched the last two, or I watched the first two episodes last week. Okay. And then I watched the third one today. What are your thoughts so far? I like it. I, I think it's it's a great... You always do the VPR thing. I, I like to keep it away from calling it early Vanderpump. Okay. Because it's, it's its own thing. And I feel like there's different personalities in this than you would see in different other shows. Uh, there's a lot of shit going on. And once you get a little closer to the cast and understand who they are as people, you understand their motives. And I think the best part is... There are some auxiliary characters, there's a new character too, that you don't like at all. But the majority of the people that are in the show all the time, I have no reason to not like them. No, they're very I, I find myself rooting for them. I find myself understanding where they're coming from. I get what they're talking about. I, I, I just genuinely enjoy watching it, which is so weird because there's always in a housewife show, in Southern Charm, Summer House, whatever, there's always one or two people that I'm like, get the fuck off the screen. Like, you bring me nothing. You do nothing for the show. But there's nobody like that on this show. Everybody, even when they pop up randomly and you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that person, they can still deliver in a scene. Yeah, and I think one thing you get with an early show such as this, especially when it's a good show, the characters are instantly more relatable. Yeah. Because they have not been on TV. They are not wealthy. They're not all walking around and driving Range Rovers and wearing the nicest shit around. Like These people are working every day. You get it's just a much more relatable cast and like the stuff that they're doing at night and just the that's probably my biggest thing with it. And this goes, like I said, to any newer show is like because we had the same feelings about Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. 
because they haven't been on TV. And that does make a big difference. Like what you're getting seems a lot more genuine. The reactions are genuine. The missteps they take, it's kind of fun to watch because we've seen these things happen across the board through yeah. all franchises. But this is the first time you're watching these people make some kind of stupid mistake. And you're like, oh, I know how this is going to go because so-and-so did it on this season of this show. So it's just, it's fun and it's it's new and it's refreshing and the drama's still relatively light because the stakes aren't super high. You don't get into that dark, murky area where yeah, Nobody's shit, ruining marriages or right, any of that you know, shit. Like yeah. People are fucking around with, you know, someone said something mean about this person and somebody kissed this person and yeah, it's still fucked up, but it's not life-altering, which yeah. is fun. The stakes not being as high makes it fun. Yeah, and I mean, they work, like you said, they work together every night. They work like five days a week, six days a week. So you have to keep that working relationship fresh and they're still hanging out on the side. Yeah. They still spend their off days with each other on the golf course or at bars or bopping around. Well, we parties. follow a bunch of them on Instagram. They're always on trips together. Yeah, off of they're the show. always hanging out, which is like, okay, so you guys are legitimately friends. And when something bad happens with one of your friends and you guys get into a fight, you have to go to work tonight with each other. That's way different than these other shows. Like that's it's, the Vanderpump part. That yeah, that's that somewhere. is the Vanderpump part that actually makes a lot of sense. But it makes more sense for you to try to squash something. And whenever they try to squash something on this show, it seems genuine. It's not that bullshit apology where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I would never do that to you again. And then it happens the next week and you're like, okay, yeah, I saw that coming. Mm -hmm. This seems like they genuinely want to go back to being friends when they have issues with each other. And I like that. How many seasons do you think it takes to get vindictive and angry and it no longer is light and fun? Three? Yeah, probably like start like when does end, end of the third, beginning in? of the fourth. Or I guess when does self awareness leave? Actually, yeah, I still think like for the for these guys, like second season, you're pumped that you got a second season. Right, like, first season was a fucking whirlwind. Probably second season comes through, you're still so excited that it's there, and yeah, you're starting to look for the cameras a little bit more. But I still think that it's pretty organic and pretty normal. By the time the third season rolls around, you start to look for little things and understand how the show works and how the game works. I think we're going to start seeing some people. Yeah. Lose it, well, their again, grasp. unless you interject with this, some douchebag who very clearly just wants to start some shit because he's an asshole. Oh, do they have that now? They, they have that now, and that's part of the. No, they went, ahead and, they went ahead and added that. <laughs> yeah, get them fucking deported or something. Um, Jesus. <laughs> they, well, I, we'll get into it. I, I hate that guy. Well, let's let's jump right into this episode and let's preface it a little bit. So leading up to this episode, episodes one and two, the biggest bombshell that we got. And if you watched last season, uh, you are probably not a Trevor fan because I don't know how anybody could be a Trevor no, fan. No, the worst easy. part is Trevor's from this area. He's from the main line. And anybody named Trevor from the main line is probably a douchebag. Lo and behold, so is this Trevor. But he cheated, allegedly cheated on Maddie, which is his girlfriend for a long time. And then they broke up because he cheated previously. And now there's rumors that he cheated again. This gets very murky towards the end of the episode. I am fully on board that he cheated. He definitely cheated. It's not actually murky. He oh, called his whoa, 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 whoa. and said, hey, lie for totally. me, bud. Let's go. <laughs> don't, don't spoil it. I know what happened and we're going to break it down very well. But let's jump into this episode. That's the biggest thing you need to know if you're new here. Trevor allegedly cheated on Maddie. Everyone else is just getting their feet wet. New season. We're catching up with people still. That's the that's the bombshell. All right, but we start out this episode with Joe and a potential new love interest. They're at Republic. As we know, last season, Joe got himself in a little hot water because he was into Maddie. He picked the worst time ever to tell Maddie. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Literally, the, <laughs> it could not have been a worse time to tell Maddie that he was in love with her. Immediately left that boat was still literally his mouth was still warm from saying I have feelings for you as he planted a kiss on Mia's mouth. Why'd you get so <laughs> because I needed to to so you can visualize it at home. <laughs> what? I don't know. There's, there's something about that just seemed weird. No, no, I like I know. the way you did all I that. phrased it intentionally. I did it on purpose. Uh, yeah, that's gross. Stay with me. But anyway he is self-aware enough to at least say, like, yeah, you know, last year wasn't my best move. This year I need to play it a little bit smarter. But maybe, maybe not date people I'm working with. But <laughs> this chick is pretty hot and she seems to get me right out of the gate. And hey, Leva, sorry, bro. Like <laughs> I can't, but like I understand what he's talking about. Like, I get it. He works six fucking days a week. He gets one day off and he goes golfing with his boys. 
I understand that. You don't have a lot of time to go dating. And guess what? You're working at Republic. The best looking girls, the most personable girls are probably getting jobs there around your age. And you're Joey what fucking you bottles, Joey baby. Fucking bottle. Yeah. And if I can't drink on the job, am I even Joey bottles anymore? Joey water bottles yeah, now. Joey water bottles. I actually texted him. I was like, Joey water bottles, sub, bro. <laughs> that's, not, that's not bad, though. I talked to him today. He, go for a nice we need cold to go down bottle. there. He wants us to golf. We, he said, come down during March Madness. Yeah, after watching him golf in this scene, Joe. That's what I texted him. I said after watching I'll that you, stroke, I'll give you twelve strokes. Yeah, I said after watching that stroke, we'll come down there and wax that ass anytime, pal. So put that in the book. We're gonna try to get down there in March. I'm not making any promises. We're gonna try our best to get down there. But St. Patty's in Charleston. Don't threaten me with a good time. But uh, that leads us to our next scene. We get Joe and we got a newbie, and his name is O'Sheen, and O'Sheen is from Ireland, and O'Sheen is, for lack of a better word, a douchebag. Yes. Yes. And it's, you know... There is no better word than that to describe him. And I don't like to judge a book by its cover ever. I like to give him the benefit of the doubt. But I was already jaded on this guy because this is the dude, and I think it was Charlie, and I think it was Vanderpump. They were at a pool party when they were at... It was Sheeners, I believe. And it was the the party when Raquel got before she was found out and her and Lala... Or her and Katie were beefing. And she was talking shit to Katie, whatever. Is it the Labor Day party that they yeah, were at? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, the one that Tom didn't leave. Tom didn't yeah, leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at that party. Not going on at that party. I, I think it's the same party. I could be wrong. I know it was a pool party, and I know that somebody got slapped on the ass that did not want to be slapped on the ass. The person doing the slapping was no other than O'Sheen himself. So that was my preface of who this guy was, uh, which is even funnier, and not in a funny way, that he slaps Emmy on the ass later. Like, this is this guy's M.O., and I know dudes like this, and this is why I had preconceived notions, is because there's certain dudes out there that look a certain way, sound a certain way, and act a certain way, and a lot of people, dudes and women, respond to it because, like, oh, look at this edgy, cool guy. He's different. He doesn't follow the same rules, and these kinds of dudes believe that. They yeah. believe that they are on a different level, so they can say weird shit. They can slap people on the ass. They can do quote-unquote edgy shit because oh they'll get away with it because oh that's just O'Sheen he's cool he's different he's edgy he's worldly you get a lot of the worldly types yeah. doing if this he didn't if he didn't have the long hair he'd be a soft two out of ten yeah agreed For sure agreed and instead you Dude get this guy not that's like he's guy. walking around with his moose knuckle out like anyone gives a fuck you have an only fans congrats so does a thousand ten thousand a hundred thousand other man. dudes he's a milkman yeah dude I pour, I pour milk on myself who doesn't <laughs> My point being, I, 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 as soon as I saw him and his interactions, I was like, fuck, I hope that I'm wrong about most of this stuff. I'm not. He showed me his true colors right out of the gate. The way that he talked to Will was fucking ridiculous before I found out some things, and we'll get to that. But anyway, while they're golfing, we get a little side scene with the, the rest of the friends. You know, TJ's there, and uh, Mia's there, and Emmy's there, and Will's there, and they're talking about how... This is becoming Joe's M.O. is when something new and shiny enters the group. He has to be the one to hang out with it. So Sheen's new to the group. He wants to be his bestie. They're going golfing. The rest of the group doesn't see Joe anymore because he's attached to the hip to O'Sheen. Yeah, and it sounds like they're going out. They're bringing back some birds to the house. And Joe and O'Sheen are both making out with the same girl. So maybe that's just... Uh, that also, yeah. Maybe I, Joe's I, just going through a little I bit of a up phase in there. Yeah, I, a little, he's look, just... I, I mean, I do understand that concept. It's like, look at this guy. Like, he can... I'm single in a town where I don't get to go out a whole lot. This dude just goes around and talks to fucking everybody. And he ends up bringing girls back to my apartment. So that's going to set me up and maybe I can start dating some of these girls. And to be clear, dating means going out with them on a date. Yeah, I know. I still don't All think right, that's literally. the definition. But, but maybe that's what Joe's thinking. And yeah, I think that he gets a little too wrapped up in that and kind of neglects his friends on the side. And they're kind of feeling hurt on the side. I get yeah. that. Yeah, but what's nice about you know these shows, especially with this like younger crew is they're much faster to call each other out yeah they won't sit and stew on things they'll they'll bring it to the attention pretty quick so that's what i like about this show is it's similar to roni the new one yeah things move quick we're on to the next topic fast and we don't have long attention spans so we need you to keep moving it's that tiktok mind tiktok ruined us all but this is where we find out that O'Sheen apparently slapped Emmy on the ass during a dinner service. They were cleaning up. It was like 2.30 in the morning. He walked by her and gave her a slap on the ass. Emmy takes it very well. She could make this a much bigger deal, and rightfully so. She has every right to be as upset as she wants about it because it's an unwanted slap on your butt. 
She's pretty mellow. She says, I don't want to blow it up. I do want to say something. I want Will to say something because that's really hot. Which, yeah, of course it is. You know, one-armed Will. Anyway, this is the first check and we go with Mikel, really, this whole season. And he has decided to take a step back from Republic because, and honestly, what I think happened, I think he watched the first season and saw himself in those moments where he's at the party, at G Lily's and losing his shit there. He yeah. was at the bar losing his shit on TJ. He was at the bar losing his shit on other people. I think he watched himself back. It was like, I don't want to be this dude anymore. Which is a similar thing like Craig. Craig watched himself on seasons, didn't like what he was seeing. Yeah, plus Made adjustments. I mean, what he did say, I think, in the first or second episode that he works at Republic like once a week. Once now. a week, yeah. So he does take a full step back from that. And I get that because guess what, dude? You're still on the show. Yeah. Like you are still a, a cast member on this show. And you don't have to work there five days a week. You get to go do other things and you get to go rent a new house and figure out all of that. And take Move care on of with yourself. your life. And you still get to be on the show. If you want to ride that and just move that forward going on Bravo, then good for you. That's going to help because you're not going to be around these people. And that's one thing. I don't think that I'd be able to hang out and work with the exact same people every single day, go out with them, and then also film a TV show. I would be losing my mind. I'd need to get away from these people. He's doing that. What are you talking what about me? I see like three times a week. That's a lot. That's enough. I think you're any more, any more. Not simply untrue, sir, because we were away together for a long weekend for our LA show, and then you came over that Monday to watch football. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> but as we know, Mikel is friends with Trevor, so anytime he speaks on Trevor's behalf, I take it with a grain of salt. And I love Mikel. We love Mikel. He's great. He's actually been listening to us for a while. Reached out to us a couple times. He's he's awesome. Like Mikel's great, but I think Trevor is a douche canoe, and it drives me crazy that he gets a pass because the big question mark is: Did Trevor make out with this chick? Because now we have quote unquote conflicting stories. Now the conflicting stories are coming from people very close to Trevor, so I don't take that seriously either. But Mikel says that Trevor didn't kiss her; his friend did. Oh, oh. now it makes sense. So now, except. Why would the girl still be texting Trevor? Trevor thank Why you. is Trevor saying, Yeah, no, I'm going to go hang out with my boys for a birthday party, blah, blah, blah. And then she responded again. One, you're an idiot. You, you clearly probably deleted some messages in there. Just delete the whole thing. Like, what are you doing? That's the stupidest fucking thing in the world. Why is this girl texting you if she hooked up with her with your That's friend? That's my biggest point. What is this the JT of friends? Like, it makes what's going no on? No sense. If it this is a one time thing, why are you texting her? No, it doesn't make any sense. And that dude that they showed that FaceTimed Trevor and Mikkel at the bar, like, very clearly was coerced into saying, "Nah, dude, like she was she was throwing the vibes at me, and then she ended up kissing me." And and Trevor's face is like, "See, I told I you, told so. you, dude. Fuck you, dude. You definitely made out with this girl, and you're just trying to cover your." tracks because guess what your friends are just as much of a douchebag as you are but what drives probably me... a bunch of uh bike taxi boys out there they are they're a bunch also of... how the fuck does a guy who rides a bike taxi around for a living get girls what, what is charleston edgy. what is this place he's cool he's not even edgy he's different he rides a bike cab he's gotta uh, be a little off the cuff he might be homeless who knows <laughs> that's the fun Find part out. that's the fun part dude but, I mean, it almost breaks my heart because, like, Maddie is so stuck on this guy. And I don't know why. I cannot, for the life of me, figure it out. But, by the way, just putting this one together, he probably drives a bike taxi around Charleston because his parents are from the fucking main line and he has plenty of money. Yeah, that's I don't point. think he's struggling down there in Charleston riding a bike cab. That's just what I think. Don't want to make any assumptions. Way to pick up chicks. But uh, seriously, but <laughs> with the Maddie part of it, it, it frustrates me because she is so ready. Like she loves this guy so much, and I can't fault her for that. Because like every confession, she's like, "My gut tells me this is my person." It's like, well, your gut is wrong. Yeah, your gut is stupid. Your gut is telling you to stop fall trusting for, your gut. Yeah, he's cheating on you. He's done it before. He hasn't had. Here's the thing: for people to make major changes to who they are. They need to go through a major life event. He has not. Yeah. You broke up with him. Then you let him back in the fold. And I, if I have to hear her say, I just, you know, I understand giving people second chances is sometimes the way to go. Stop saying that. You're giving it. said it four times. That's five chances. Y yeah. Enough. That's not how this works. This is your chance to get away, get out and of I, there. But I don't understand it because Maddie is a great girl, and she could probably have her pick of any guy in Charleston. Joey Bottles. She, 
chooses. Well, I think the Joey Bottles thing is dead. And you know what? I don't want Joey to be dating mo- the girls that he's working with. All yeah, right, Joey, knock it off, bro. Stay out of there, bud. But she could have the pick of any guy that she wants in Charleston, and she chooses this dickhead and then sticks with him, and he has the nerve to cheat on her? That's the craziest That's part. That's the craziest That's part. That's the craziest part is that he's out there making out with other chicks. What a Philly scumbag. He really is. He's the quintessential Philly scumbag. But we finally get to talk to G. Lily. There hasn't been a whole lot of her in the first two episodes. She's domesticated, man. She G. Lily is, is domesticated. She's in a nice relationship, having a great time. With Liam. Yep. And seems like a lovely dude. He seems okay. Seems like a great guy. He seems okay. What's fucking hold up on Liam now? He seems to say the right thing in front of the mom every sentence. And that's a red flag for me. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? What's wrong with you? Uh, I... hey, what's going on? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what what's fuck? your issue with Liam? <laughs> I don't trust him. Why? I don't know. Because he's nice to G. Lily's he's mom? He's very nice. Well, I hope this is who he is. Oh, oh, I hope that everything he's doing is genuine. I don't believe it. I think, he, and maybe this you know is. G. Lily is very happy. She enjoys being around Liam. G. Lily's always happy. Why don't you just be happy for her? I am. She's done with fuckboys. Whoa, 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 whoa. If this is coming off as though I'm not happy for her, maybe I'm protective. I think you are being protective of G. Lily. Because you know? <laughs> she's, look, she's great TV. And we had a whole come to Jesus moment last year with her because in the beginning we're like, Jesus, this chick. And now we're like, wow, she's great. She's Great on TV. She is. So I don't want Liam to drag her down. Okay. She's 25. She's got her whole life ahead of her. Liam, look, maybe he's great. Maybe I'll eat my words. Dude, he's like feeding the cats. He's out. I think he's just a great guy. How long have they been dating? How long have they been dating? Six months. No way. Eight months. What? She said? Yeah, eight months. Okay. Longer now if they're still together. I didn't know. There's no way they're still together. Instagram sleuth. There's no way they're still together. Can you do it in real time? Yeah, do it. All right, fine. I'm saying you keep going on with your point. No, no, no. I'm going to sit here and wait and just cut this out because I just need to know because I don't think so. There's no way. Okay, maybe she's not with him anymore because she ah! took pictures of her birthday party five days ago and he is not in those pictures. Told you. What the fuck? What happened to Liam? God, is he scrubbed from her entire Instagram feed? What a. This is my point. So thank you for proving me in real time. This was fun. I'm glad I waited. Oh, God. Do you want to know what O'Sheen's fucking Instagram handle is? Uh, You're not going to guess it. What is it? Delicious back. I hate it. I hate it a lot. I don't care for that. You want to see some milk? <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I do. Show me some milk. No, no. Maybe he'll grow on us. He's not going to. Maybe he will. He is by far. Listen to me. Trashing Liam. Hope for O'Sheen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a good point. No, yeah, well, no, it's not gonna happen. O'Sheen is the guy that, if he's at any function that I go to, I'm probably immediately leaving. That's a fair point because he will not be able to just stay by himself and like stick with his friends and make some noise over there. Yeah, center of the party. He's gonna have to bop around and be like, "The king's around here. Give me the chalice." Like, fuck off, dude. Yeah, we don't want to give you the chalice. Oh, I right, left move, my chalice at home. Let's pal. Move on. We're not even close to that point yet. Well. We get Will and Emmy, and they're at Will's parents' office, and his dad, as we know, is a lawyer and wants him to follow the same path. It actually, the Will stuff, and it did last year as well, almost reads like a movie or plays like a movie. It's like this kid wants to be in the bar scene, but he can't because his parents want him to go to law school, and he's with this beautiful girl who treats him so well, and all she wants- a Hallmark movie. Yeah. So I didn't say blockbuster. Like, it's just a fucking movie. Can you let me go, please? And not derail me. Anyway, his parents wanted to follow in the same footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> My point he is, he gets into a boxing match, yeah, breaks he, his arm, he fights for Emmy's honor, break or sorry, he fights for charity, breaks his arm, and then he has to speed up the process because some other man challenges Emmy's honor. It reads like a Rocky movie now. Kind of think about that. And now he's got to choose: does he go to law school or does he go train in a montage with some old man? in the mountains carrying logs to get strong enough to fight O'Sheen because O'Sheen's a rugby player. Milkman. The milkman. O'Sheen the milkman. I don't know his last name versus Will the Pill. Will the Thrill would have been smarter. Will the Thrill. Will the Pill. Now it's Will the Pill. It's too late. So Will the Pill versus O'Sheen. Charlie O'Sheen the milkman. We're just getting too out of hand? Yeah. No, this is good. And then Will kills O'Sheen. It's good, but we just need to go. We need to move forward. Okay. I don't know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting with Will and Emmy in Will's Will dad's Emmy. office. Right. So they're chatting. And 
this one's interesting to me because these two seem inseparable. They seem like this is all they want. They want to get married, have the white picket fence, whatever it takes to do that. I understand Will was also bouncing around the idea of opening bars and restaurants and going down that path, but made the decision to go to law school. I did think it's interesting. However, his two reasons for going to law school was to make his dad happy and to make Emmy happy. Mm -hmm. At no point did he say, this is what I want to do. And I wonder if that's going to rear its head at some point during the next three years while he's at law school, because it very well might. Like, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, that's not going to be sustainable. It could, but it sounds like he has a good head on his shoulders because he's questioning things. He's not just going into them blind. It's not like what we usually see where people say, yeah, you know, I, I want to go to law school because of this and that. And you don't think about yourself. And then someone else has to ask the question, is this, are you doing this for yourself? Are you even happy to do this? Who knows? He's questioning everything. He's like, I, I don't know what the future brings. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. And he's self-aware. He knows that the best yep. part about him and Emmy's relationship is the fact that they can hang out together all the time, that they're inseparable. And this isn't going to be the same thing. So he is aware of that, which is wild to see on any of these shows. He's going to be away. You're going to have to deal with time away from your girlfriends that you've never had to deal with before. How are you going to get through it? Make sure you sit down and have that talk first to understand where the perspective is and what the outlook is and how we're going to move forward and how we're going to adjust to this and try to go from there. He's keeping an open mind instead of just being regimented in whatever he's going to be doing, which I always appreciate. No, I appreciate that too, but I guess my question is, is he apprehensive about the lack of spending time together because he is going to miss that time together? Or is he apprehensive because he thinks that missing that time together will make them both realize that maybe this isn't what they want? I think he's just afraid to be away from his girlfriend for too long. You think? Because he, yeah, he even I says, think... like, maybe this is this a forever thing. Like, he seems to have the, maybe that's just him overthinking. It's probably him overthinking, I would say, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, actions. He's what, like 24, 25? Actions yeah. speak louder than words, He'll shooter. Figure it out. Will he? They're because... still together. Relax. Are they still together? Yeah, that's an Instagram thing. That's okay. Look up. That's yeah. very important yeah. to know. Yeah. That's very important to know. I wonder how this is all going to shake posted out. Posted last week. Although they did like a 5K or something last week together, which... Oh, man. God. I'm so glad I didn't I marry know. into a 5K family. God, dude, My family used to be time. a 5K family. I know. You used to do the holiday run, I'm which was cool. I'm glad we got over that. It was cool because you could see Lou dressed up with a little Santa hat on, and that always got me going. Yeah, but... he looked cute. Yeah, no, dude. Not... No, I didn't do it, but... We get to check in with Oshin and learn a little bit about him. Uh, his brother has autism. He's back in Ireland, and I guess it's just him, his brother, and his sister. His sister was left at home to take care of his brother. He got a rugby contract, which is what brought him to the States. I would like to know more about that. That's actually interesting to me. Is like, how did you get to this point? I don't care that you were in Tulum. I don't care that you are worldly. I know you're going to use that at every possible moment. Heard about it every episode. Yeah, because you're gonna. That's your thing. That's your go-to. Is how working at a bar in three different countries doesn't make you fucking worldly. No, it makes you a vagrant. Yeah, that's all it makes you. <laughs> but we do get to learn more about him. And hey, if and you know me, I'm always going to hope for the best here, even with Liam. Even though I dragged him. But with Oshin, like maybe there's a place where he gets through his fuckboy phase and then we can learn about him and his family a little bit more. I hope he's just putting this. I don't think he's putting on for the cameras, though. I think this is no, who he is, unfortunately. Tend to settle in a little bit in season two or the second season they're on the show. Like after they watch it on TV, that's going to be the most telling I, thing. Look, I think that. I think all the fuckboy shit, I think all the look at me, I'm the king, here's my dick just hanging out of a Speedo in the middle of a party. I think that's him. I fully believe that that's him, just based off of what Maddie and Grace Lilly have both said when they talked about going down to Tulum and they met him for the first time. They said he was the king of the party and he was all over the place. And we thought that we could have this guy back up in Charleston. And he just came up to Charleston to do this. That's Weird. how he got there? Yeah, dude. Red flag, number one. Oh. Two, I think that the shit that we see at the end of this episode where he is actively stirring the pot on things, that I hope goes away. Because I, you know what? You can do whatever the fuck you want. I mean, you can even say that he's kind of the male version of Grace Lily in that sense, no, where he has to be the center you of attention. Don't her like I, that. Not, not the other things. Just talking about being the center of the party and wanting all the attention on them. That is Grace Lily. But she does it in a much more endearing way. You say now, but this time last year, you did not say that. Because I didn't know her. Okay, so I'm saying we might get to that point where we understand what Oshin is. That's what I was saying. What I'm saying is... What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> what a word salad. Are you trying to fuck me up? What are you talking about? That's literally what I was doing. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> is that where you were going with that? <laughs> 
Nuh-uh. Like, Prove it. Good defense. Prove it. Roll the tape, you idiot. But we get a night out with everybody, and they are recapping the ass-slapping incident. And <clears throat> O'Sheen and Joe are not present for this conversation. It's JT, Emmy, and Will. And they're out at the bar. They were thinking about inviting Joe to bring O'Sheen to force the apology. They show up unannounced and walk up, and what happens is not an apology, and it no. doesn't go very well, because O'Sheen is trying to talk to them, and we did get, I guess it's important to note, like they had that boys out night at some point, yeah. because that's where this rumor is stemming from, and that's, I guess, why O'Sheen has a problem with Will. Sure. But let me, let me just straighten this out for everybody right now. O'Sheen's problem with Will is this. O'Sheen wants to fuck Emmy, and Will's dating her. That's his problem. Yeah, probably. That there's nothing else there except Will's dating her. He doesn't get it, and he wants to bang her, so he's being an asshole, and then he's going to try to tear it apart because that's what these kind of guys do. And I'm not saying that Will is vindicated. We don't know what happened, and it's going to play out in the next few weeks, and we will comment on it. But I will say, I know guys like O'Sheen, and I know his game plan, and I know what he's trying to do there. That's why he's not looking at Will. He's trying to... What he's trying to do is emasculate him here. He's trying to emasculate him, but he's also not fucking apologizing. He's talking about... Emmy, if you want me to treat you a little bit differently, then I will. That's not being treated differently. That's a fucking HR sexual conduct violation. It's a fucking HR. A piece That's of just shit, dude. a violation on her, period. Yeah, like, you can't do that. Like, that makes no sense. So the fact that you're not apologizing for doing that in the first place shows what kind of person you are. Yeah, I wrote You it. slapped her on the ass, and you're saying, if you want me to treat you differently, I will. Yeah, That's you, not an apology. You want to be That's treated. That's not an admission of guilt. That is saying, hey, this is who I am. I slap girls on the ass without telling them that I'm going to, no without having doing that. any sort of way of getting permission to do so in the first place. I'm just going to go over and do it because I'm O'Sheen and this is what I do. I'm the milkman. Of course I'm going to do this. <laughs> he doesn't see any issue with that. That's my biggest issue with him. I don't give a shit about the whole center of attention thing. I don't care about stirring up shit with Will. He touched another girl. And he's not apologizing for it. He could be fired. He could get charges brought on him. He doesn't understand that that's an issue. He doesn't understand that that's the wrong thing to do. He thinks that that's okay. That's a fucking problem. You're a scumbag. Well said. And I think that Will actually handled himself very well here because immediately after he says, you want to be treated differently, he's like, no, not differently, dude. She wants to be treated with respect, period, as anybody does because you're a dirtbag. No one's out here grabbing asses anymore. Okay, that's not a thing. It's not a wacky thing you do because you lived in Tulum. All right? No one's slapping asses in yep. Charleston. So don't walk around slapping asses. And like you said, if you do, immediately apologize and never fucking do it again. But I love that, you know, Will threw his shoulder out boxing. Yeah. So I love oh, This that. was the best line. So good. He's like, you don't even know why I'm in this sling. Just you wait. You wait, motherfucker. I fucking love that. I love that. That's it. when the montage starts. So, yeah. and then That's it, the start of the DVD. And then you get some old dude walk in and say, did you say you're a fighter? I was a fighter. I won the gold gloves back in 1963. I got a gym over there under the stairs. If you want to work with me, be there tomorrow naked. Why? Don't worry about it. Bring a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but shit... Shit gets heated, and understandably so, but my big problem is O'Sheen doesn't know Will, all right? And for all intents and purposes, Will did get in the ring with somebody and fight and win. I'm not saying that makes him a great fighter. I'm saying he's not afraid to get in a fight, and that's important to know because now O'Sheen is trying to bark at this guy, and I guarantee O'Sheen's biggest move is he likes to get loud and in people's faces because he assumes that people aren't going to clap back at him because yep. he looks a certain way. Which he's again, he's not like some daunting giant figure where I'm like, oh, don't fuck with that guy. He thinks he is. And those dudes tend to be huge pansies. Yeah. So I like that Will stood his ground and I hope that he continues to stand his ground. But this is where we get the rumor, little inkling, because O'Sheen goes to a confessional and he says, why would I respect this guy? And I was like, that's weird. You don't know the guy. But then he makes it, <clears throat> but then he takes it a little bit further and he says that, well, we had boys' night. He did something unsavory or something like that. He, he, he's a little Some sort of weird word, yeah. And that pretty much takes us to G Lily's birthday. We do get a little tidbit that Brad and Lucia hooked up at some point. It gets confusing because Lucia doesn't confirm it later, but says she would like to climb his shoulders. And I, this, I don't understand. I think they hooked up. I do too. But can you explain this to me? I just want to climb those shoulders and be pretty on top. I, I, I'm thinking something, but there's no way it's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, th I think you're thinking the right thing. And I think yeah, I think thing? you're thinking the right thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. 
Good yeah. for them. It's um, like when you're at a concert and like you can't like like you're with a girl and she can't correct. see the stage. Yeah, so she gets up on her sh- on her, your shoulders, but reverse. But like turn around. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. On the same yeah. page. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. No, I just I was curious. Good for them. They're young. They can figure it out. But <laughs> we're at G Lily's birthday. And it's perfect. Like, this is the perfect intro scene. She's rolling up on the boat. Liam is just pouring sweat with his buttons all the way down to his taint. He's a big button guy. Yeah. Like, he's button all the buttons. So he's rolling up. Lily's doing, like, her whole spiritual thing. And she pulls up, like, my people. Yeah. I love to live in the realms, baby. That's my Lily impression. But we get the whole crew there. And, of course, O'Sheen pulls up with his moose knuckle for everybody to see wearing a cape. It's not a good outfit. It's not in tune with what they're doing. It's fairy tale, not sex party. Yeah. You're dressed for a sex party, which is fine. I'm sure there's some weird sex parties in Charleston you can go to, but this Whitney is a probably birthday. help you out with that one. Yeah. yeah. Call Whitney. Whitney probably gave him the outfit, honestly. That's a good point. Yeah. But the big topic of conversation initially is Maddie and Trevor, and everyone's talking about it. And I, the thing that bugs me about Maddie is that she always gets so like, weirdly protective and then pissed off that people are talking about it and she's like everyone's always talking about trevor why why maddie there's a reason he's not just getting brought up because they're trying to tear down your relationship most of these people don't fucking care anymore that's the thing that i have gathered because joe's out the rest of the crew is like maddie's not even checking into work she's checked out most people don't care yeah so if they're still talking about it that tells you i guess my biggest point is this if you have to constantly question whether or not he's doing the right thing and there are rumors out there and text messages on the phone, even if he didn't stick his tongue in that girl's mouth, there's a problem here. Like, recognize that there is a common denominator with all of your stress points. Yeah. And I, it starts with T and ends with Rever. Yeah, Maddie's just delusional. And that's that's the big problem here. She's She wants this life with Trevor because she's already made her mind up for whatever fucking reason. I don't know what she sees in the loser, but here we are. And she blames everybody else. Brad comes to her and lets her know what's going on. Does Brad hate Trevor? Yes. Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. Everybody hates Trevor. That's the thing. Does he hate her or does he hate Trevor? Yes. Does he also want to tell his friend and coworker Maddie what's going on so that she knows now? Yes. Those two things can both be true. He's not doing it for the downfall of Trevor. He's doing it because everybody knows that Trevor is a scumbag. He found out hard evidence that Trevor hooked up with another girl, came to you, and Maddie's blaming Brad. Brad is always sticking his head in my business. He has no business getting into this. He doesn't even know Trevor. He just fucking hates him. He just wants to see us like at each other's necks. That's not what's going on. He's telling you because Trevor's a scumbag and nobody wants to see you with this guy. She cannot see past that. She's fucking delusional. And then this guy shows up. Somebody who you broke up with. Somebody who you just threw his phone on the ground after catching him texting another girl that he's accused of hooking up with. And you're not going to like blow up in front of him. Your best friend, Grace Lily, is just going to invite him to a party, yeah. which he's just going to smile and smirk in the corner and be like, hey, I'm here. Look at this. We're sitting next to each I'll other. Isn't, the villain isn't drink. that cool? Like, fuck you, dude. You suck. You're a scumbag. But this is the thing. She has, Maddie has two groups of friends in this. One side despises him. The other side with Mikkel and Grace Lily, they, for whatever reason, want to keep pushing Trevor on it. You can just leave Trevor out of everything, and maybe Maddie would finally move on. It's almost like they don't want Maddie to be happy. They're right? just like, That's the vibe it, it doesn't make any sense, though. Like, how does everybody else see this? How do we see this when we're watching TV? But no one else, like Mikkel and Grace Lily, just don't understand what's going on with this dude? And we like Mikkel and Grace Lily. I love Mikkel, but I, I don't get it. Guys, help her. Help. Help he, us. Dude, I don't want to watch that loser. Trevor's a dud. For He's all... not even good for TV. That's the worst part. He if he was bring, good for he TV, that'd be great. nothing to the table. He doesn't say anything. He just sucks. He stinks on ice. But we get Joe going over to apologize to, to Emmy and Will. And it's funny. Joe's the one. He's like, I felt attacked. And I don't really appreciate yeah, that. It's like, Joe. Hey, I, I, I actually at first said out loud, Joe, you weren't attacked. No. Nah. But then I realized, I mean, he did at the end of it. Will went right at Joe and was like, why did you fucking bring him here if he wasn't going to apologize? They talked about apologizing on the way over here. As far as Joe knew, it sounded like Oshim was maybe going to apologize a little bit. Yeah, Joey felt Maybe you should know better, but at the same time, it's a new friend. You don't know how he's going to react. But I think it's important in this moment for Joe to get checked a little bit and understand like, hey, man. But he still came over and apologized for that. He did. And that's okay. He did. But at the same time, like, I hope he hears what they were saying to him. You picked him over us, which you did. Unintentionally, perhaps, but you did. And at the same time, O'Sheen's friendship should not trump these friendships because you've known these people longer. Yep. Just because it's the shiny new toy doesn't mean you should go all in on this end. 
I know he's got a great moose knuckle covered in milk, but there are more important things in the world. <laughs> there are more important things in the world. You're right. But this is where everything comes to a head, and O'Sheen brings up the rumor. And then a lot of people know about this rumor. And yeah, it didn't sound like everybody heard from O'Sheen. It sounded like other people were talking about it on their right? own. Right, and Emmy and her confessional made it seem like one person says it, and it's whispered down the lane. I'm like, they're not whispering, though. They're across the party, and everyone's bringing it up. And everybody's saying the same thing, That too. there's two girls, and then but Will... But it sounded like Emmy knew about it, too, so it wasn't, like, but that's new the information. And this is when it gets a little muddy for me, and I can't fully say I believe Will, because... I kind of do believe Will. So just like bear with me for a sec, all right? Like the story, that makes sense, all right? You two knew the same guy. She was dating or hooking up with him, whatever. He passed away. Yeah, you would have an emotional conversation. Now tell me any point in your life, any point in your life, where it would have been appropriate to have an emotional conversation with another woman in the bathroom while you were dating somebody else. Yeah, Any situation. no. It doesn't make sense. At the same time, his intentions could have been pure than trying to talk to her and console her. They're in the bathroom. They've been drinking. They're both crying over this kid that they lost. Something happens. They get a little too close. A kiss is exchanged. Very plausible. Could happen. Yeah, it is very plausible. I get it. I just... I'm looking at it very black and white until there's more information. Which is fair. Which is just and that I trust Will together. over Oshin. I do too, but are we getting blinded by the fact that he's got a great jawline and a great smile and seems like he's on the up and up? Yeah. Okay. For sure. All right. That's how I get blinded every time. I will say this. I always will say a great this. jawline. It's always a sling too. Like, sling and a jawline just God melts me. But I don't think that he did. I and like I'm honestly with everybody else that knows Will on the show that's saying like there's no way. Like, this dude is so in love with Emmy. That's the vibe it gives off. Yeah. So I will be shocked if it does turn out to be true. I'm Team Will for now. Well, they're still together. They so are that, still together. That, to that does say a lot. Which I usually don't like spoilers, but... That one we needed. But I'm curious to watch this one play out. This will be interesting. And again, if you're listening and don't watch this show, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you Did doing? you hear what we just mapped out for you? Especially this week. There's nothing else to watch There's on Bravo. There's nothing else to do. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Everybody's off, except for me and Steele. We still have to work. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hey, what are you doing? We, hey, what are you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what we're doing. We're doing questions. Up first from Sam Alama Lee. Oh, I like your name. Team Joe or Team Will? Wait. Are they feuding? Uh, is no, that I Team guess O'Sheen just, or Team Will? I guess it's Team O'Sheen. Team Will. Team Will. It's still Team Will. Team Will. From Shaney, do you feel that Will and Emmy even have any chemistry? Not really. I think I don't know because I because they've been together for so long that I think that it's chemistry, but they're so comfortable. It seems yeah. more like a friendship. It's it's tough to line that up with to say like Joe and his new girl. Like it, like you it's see that. It's, yeah, it's it, it is. They've been together for so long. Maybe the electricity's like so not. So, I think yeah. that there's chemistry there. Yeah. From Chrissy B. Alvarez, who is the current number one guy of Bravo and who is the current number one gal? Number one guy? Russell. Gertie's husband. Yeah. I was thinking Anthony at first. Um, I, uh, Craig. Oh, yeah, Craig. Craig, yep. yeah. Yeah, Craig's number one. And the number one woman? Just go full couple. Just page. go page. <laughs> That's where my brain is going. Whether it's true or not, my brain. Can't no, we can. We it. can pick somebody else. Uh, Doctor Nicole. Doctor Nicole has had a great season. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially now because she's calling out uh, Anne Marie about the. I know that good. Thing. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, everyone needs to call Anne Marie out. What a that's so dumb. Last one from Max June. More or less. <laughs> Believe it's supposed to say O'Sheen. It says Oslin. I feel like we're all going to make this mistake, Max, so don't worry. I'm sure I'll say it and spell it wrong in the future. More or less Oslin. More. Less. More because... I think they had a good thing working. You do not need to throw absolutely. this fucking guy in there. Absolutely. So let's get it all out there so we know, so we can get rid of him. Don't let him have a one-off here and there to where now he starts to climb into people's good graces. Now we got him full time. Unless he can bring it. Because from what I've seen from him thus far, he is taking the route of I'm going to play the douchey guy on a reality show and I'm going to yeah. do it to 110% rather than just being organic. 
organic O'Sheen, maybe he'll come out at some point. This doesn't vindicate any of the behavior. You smack the girl on the ass and you're not copping to it. So until that gets smoothed over, first and foremost, less. If they can bridge that gap and we get some actual personable moments from this guy, I'm, I'm let's give him a, the slightest bit of grace only because we're three episodes in and it's his first time on TV. I, I so th- this I'm saying this much not for anything he's done because fuck you know, him. if I, he gets fired tomorrow for slapping him in the ass good good, good. that's a, that's a really good point I think he wants to be Jax Taylor exactly yeah exactly. I think that's exactly who he's going yep. for and I hate that I hate that too can't stand that but you got anything else no I'm good I'm done well we were supposed to have two little quickies tonight and we just did two one hour episodes so hey. On a week that we had nothing to talk about, we talked more than we did last Here week. Here we are, baby. This is how much we love all of you. I hope you know that. It's because we love each other. And you. And you. All of you. Every one of you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's how we ended episodes? episode? You should have. That would have been great. Good night. Sweet dreams. Rob Rose are out here.